Yes. Okay, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome to this careers evening, and we have three graduates from our programs in equine science, environmental science, and food science and health. Uh, my name is Martin Wilkinson. I'm uh, the course director for food science and health at the moment. Um, so I'm just giving you a little bit of background and intro, and uh, then we have the graduates. And please ask questions. I mean, that, it's an open forum, and we'd like you to get as interactive as possible. So. I'm just going to talk, talk to you a little bit, uh, just to introduce the people who are going to talk to you. This is Rachel McCarthy, who was uh, from the class of 2019, uh, who's now a dietitian with the University Hospital in Limerick. We have Claudia Carey, who's graduated from the Environmental Science course with a fibre planner with TMI. And Aidan Nealon, who's graduated from class of 2017, works as a senior lab analyst in the Feathered Equine School, and he will be representing the Equine Science course. So, three graduates from the course fresh off the production line and we hope they will be able to provide you with any information that you need um, just to, to give you a bit of a heads up there's a special maths exam we usually get a, a question on that and that's for people who have only taken or have taken the higher paper only and need to get a particular grade so that will be held uh, later on in the year and uh, that's another way into the engineering courses and other courses that require a certain maths grade okay so that's the uh, special maths exam, and you'll be notified of it as well. The next career this evening is on the 9th of March, and that will be for the maths side of things. That's financial maths, common entry maths, and physics as well. So that's the next one if you're interested in that type of entry course. Um, so, But tonight we have the equine, food science, and the environmental science. And without further ado, as they say, uh, I'd like to say to welcome our graduates, the first person will be Rachel McCarthy, former student of mine, taught her all she doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Um, so my name is Rachel, I'm 25 years old and I graduated from food science about two, week, two years ago. So I'm just going to take you through kind of why I decided to choose UL and food science and where I am today in my career. So as I'm sure you're well aware, it's, it has an unbelievable campus. It was voted best campus in 2019 and 2020. It also has the best Erasmus and cooperative education programme. Um, the facilities are unbelievable, like there's so many different types of cafes on the grounds. It has um, Ireland's first Olympic swim pool, um, has a UL arena, and then it has newly built UL library. So there's several things to do on campus and it's all kind of enclosed, especially if you're living on campus, there's five different villages. So, you know, it's a really good way to get to know people. Um, also has really good employability rates like it's crazy over 96 percent of graduates are in employment or further study so um graduate employment rate is consistently higher than the national average for more than 15 consecutive years so you know you're basically guaranteed to go on and get a job and um, which is brilliant to see so why did i choose food science and health i suppose when i um learned homec in secondary school I fell in love with nutrition and I wanted to know more about food and so I decided to go with food science and I know the career opportunities are vast like there's so many different areas that you can go into there's further masters you can do so I just thought like the opportunities are endless and then as well the course size um, it's not too big it's not too small it's about 40 to 50 people on the course so it's a good way of making friends and you kind of become familiar with everyone and by the end of fourth year like we we're all so close so it was nice that way and um, some of the subjects that you kind of go through throughout the four years so first year kind of covers all the basic sciences so a bit of biology a lot of chemistry and of and some physics as well and I, I never did chemistry in secondary school and I was petrified because I knew that was a requirement for doing an undergrad in dietetics but they go through everything really slowly really well um, you develop a really good understanding and you're all kind of on the same basis then even you catch up with people that did chemistry in um, secondary school so then I just divided the other kind of subjects into more food science uh, related ones and then 
the health related ones. So you study stuff such as food microbiology, food ingredients, food chemistry, food processing operations and food biotechnology. And then the health kind of ones, which were my favorite, <laughs> um, research trends in diet and health, human nutrition, public health nutrition, advanced nutrient metabolism, and exercise and health. So you cover a lot, but they're all really interesting topics, um, very easy to study when you have an interest in, in food and in nutrition. Um, so my co-op placement happened in third year. So it's an eight month placement. Um, you do a round of interviews and I got offered a spot um, with Abbott Nutrition, which was in Cushill, County Cavan. Um, not the brightest of places, but the work itself, I learned so much um, from. So it specializes in um, producing infant formula, which is sold internationally. So I was a quality compliance intern. So my kind of responsibilities was mainly around making sure that everyone was adhering to the policies um, in the plant and then also preparing for internal and external audits so that when external auditors would come in and they would identify you know this part of the process needs to be improved so I'd kind of be responsible for what we call compliance walk down so we would go walk around the plant where they manufacture the infant formula and we try to identify different areas that could be changed or improved um, and then we got so many opportunities when I worked there for the eight months. So we got the opportunity to visit the different sites of Abbott. So there's Abbott Vascular, where they make heart stents in Clonmel. They also make kind of the free Libra, Libra kits, um, which is used, you know, people with type 1 diabetes to monitor their blood sugars. So we got to visit the, the plant in Donegal and get a tour there. Um, we also went to Sligo and different different spots, so it was it was great. It was, and we got to meet all the different interns and hear about their roles in the different companies and see what they were doing. And there's a vast amount. Um, then kind of skills I developed, basic working skills. That's kind of like showing up on time, <laughs> wearing the right clothing, all that. Um, but mainly, I would say I was very shy in first and second year. Um, was very within my own bubble but in third year you're kind of forced to you know talk to people and improve your interpersonal skills your communication skills I was working among a team and with five people so you know you kind of have to negotiate and get better at talking to people which was so beneficial for me even moving forward in life in general so then I had my final year project in fourth year so I was with two other girls, two of my best friends, which was, I was very lucky. Um, so we did an evaluation of the bioactivity of selected dietary cereals. So basically what we were trying to do was um, examine the presence of bioactive components in seven different types of cereal grains. So that could have been whether it was rye, oats, wheat bran, uh, quinoa, stuff like that. So it was... Um, to investigate their ability to aid in the management um, of type 2 diabetes and the prevention of cardiovascular disease. So we undertook several different experiments in the labs and we wanted to compare each of the seven cereal grains um, and determine their antioxidant potential, their anti-diabetic properties and their fibre content. And then we compare that to what the literature has found to date and try to identify any gaps in the literature and kind of what needed further research. Um, and basically just to demonstrate the importance that nutrition can have in the management of um, chronic diseases. So moving on, there's several different career opportunities that you can have from food science itself. So it's mainly in the food industry, which is massive in Ireland. You can go on and do graduate programs and work for companies such as Abbott, Blombia, Carberry, Kerry Foods, Regeneron, Bulmers, Jameson, like the list is endless. Um, some of my fellow colleagues sort of went on to work for these type of companies and are getting on really well. And then there was some others that went on to do further masters. So whether that was in food business and innovation or research masters, I myself went on to study human nutrition and dietetics in UL as well. And it is very competitive to get in. Like you do have to work hard during food science to try and get, you know, good grades. But 
you do have an interview round as well. So it kind of does come down to are you good with communicating with people? And I picked up a lot of those skills from my placement, which I was very grateful for. Um, so there's 15 places when I started anyways. I don't know if it's expanded now. Um, it's a two years full time masters. And you do a thousand hours of placement just to prepare you for coming out of college and making sure that you're comfortable and you know what you're doing, because I suppose you are managing people's health. Um, so it's a crew approved um, master's, which is brilliant. And food science, it really does give you a great base knowledge um, around nutrition and you cover biochemistry and physiology, which are two requirements to get into the master's. So the, the, they'll ask for those requirements to make sure you've covered those topics and food science does that. So you're kind of covered that way. Um, at the moment, there's a cringy little photo of me in my uniform <laughs> on the first day, so I was very proud. Um, but yeah, so I'm working as a dietitian in UHL at the moment. So for the last eight months, and I'm really, really enjoying it. The department there are lovely. All the girls are so helpful. There's one guy. <laughs> it's mainly male dominated, but getting on really well. So main responsibilities, I suppose, we complete what we call a nutritional care process, which is just an assessment we do um, of each patient. And we'll, that will help us divide and devise a nutritional plan. And then we implement them. But it involves a lot of multidisciplinary teamwork. So working with the speech and language therapists, the physiotherapists, the occupational therapists, the doctors, um, talking with the nurses, like it's brilliant because there's never a dull moment because you're interacting with so many people all the time. Um, but yeah, you can go on and like career settings are endless. I work in the hospital, but you can work in the community, public health settings. Um, you can work privately, you can go on to write, you know, articles for newspapers, um, food service management and the food industry. There's even one of our graduates now at the moment is working for Monster Rugby and he's like devising plans for rugby players, which is unbelievable. So, you know, there's so much to do. Um, but yeah, I hope I haven't kept you too long. But if you have any questions at the end please do feel free to come over and talk to me because, yeah, I, I'll i be happy to help you. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Okay, our next uh, graduate is Claudia from the BSc in Environmental Science, and uh, she will tell us a little bit of her experiences. Evening, everyone. Um, my name is Claudia, and I'm a graduate of the Environmental Science course here at UL. And hopefully today I'm going to give you a bit of an insight as to what my time was like here at UL and possibly what the Environmental Science course has to offer you as potential <coughs> students. So why did I choose UL? Well, I feel Rachel touched on a lot of the bits that I'm going to be talking about, so I'll run through them quickly. So it's a globally recognised university, often within the top 2% of global ratings worldwide. It has unique support systems and services, like our first seven weeks programme, which is a group that operate within the first seven weeks of any semester, and they help to guide and help students where they feel they might need it. We also have learning centres, which offer extra tutorials if you want to get a bit of extra grinds in maths, science and IT. There's others, but they'd be the ones I would have focused on. There are world-class facilities on campus, like our state-of-the-art library, where you've got access to a plethora of books and scripts that you can just use at your own will. And there's state-of-the-art libraries, and as students of science, you'd obviously be spending a lot of your time in there and an excellent living environment, both of the best campus and its proximity to Limerick City Centre means you've got a lot of like facilities on your doorstep. Yeah. Why did I choose environmental science? I've always had an interest in science from a young age. 
for my leaving cert, I did biology and chemistry and I did geography as well. So even before I knew environmental science was going to be the course for me, I knew what kind of vein I wanted to go into. In recent years, there's obviously been a focus on climate change and global warming. So with that being what I was exposed to, I saw when environmental science was a course that I could partake in, it was an opportunity for me to do my part where I saw fit. When I looked into the course, I saw that there was a vast subject range and I knew that that would prepare me for post-graduation and all the opportunities that that had to offer. So the subjects itself, while I was studying here, the course was being remodeled. So you would be doing the same subjects that I was doing, but not necessarily in the same order. So how I broke this down was I picked five topics that I feel you will touch on throughout your time studying environmental science. So obviously environmental science itself, where you look at the fundamentals of the environment, the processes that take place and any issues that happen. Then you go on to environmental management, which is where your global warming and climate change would come into play. And you look at different sustainability and environmental protection projects and legislation that are in place. We also have clean technologies, which is any technological advances that are put in place at both an industrial level and a commercial level to just minimize the negative impacts of environmental pollutants. We have waste management as well. So with a growing population, how are we dealing with the waste we're producing? What are we doing to mitigate that and potential byproducts of processes and things that we do? How are we using it to our adv advantage? Then you have health and safety, which looks more into the environmental health and safety of the workplace and basically the environment you are active within and how to keep it safe and make it livable for people who are within it. So what I've done here is I've taken a couple of projects that I took part in during my time in the course and the modules that they were a part of. So we had conservation ecology where we did a uh, a little research project where we investigated animals and plants that were under threat or endangered and we looked into them in relation to their habitat, their behaviour, different factors that were influencing their population and then we looked at the legislation and initiatives that are being put in place to protect them and we presented that as a written research project. The next two we did in groups, so for environmental catalysis, my group looked at the functions of the diesel engine in, in order to understand in, in emissions and the environment and how they interact with each other, you have to understand where they're coming from and how they're made. So we looked at the system of reactions throughout the diesel engine and different methods of reducing the pollution at the end stage. And we presented this to our class and then we had a written project as well. For clean technologies, my group was given wind energy as their area of study. So we looked into wind turbines and how they're made and we looked into the functionality of a wind turbine so from turbine to your electrical grid to the consumer how does that process take part this was also presented to the class and then given to our lecture as a written project you also have your final year project which is probably the biggest one you'll be taking part in but i will go back to that in a bit more detail later so for cooperative placement you can go through the interview process with ul but i was lucky enough to have a contact in a environmental monitoring firm here in Limerick. So I had a nine month placement and I was in a place called Access Environmental Services. I worked there as an environmental technician and what that entailed was I would go on site and I would visit clients and monitor for particulate matter emissions like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. From the monitoring then I would come back and I would write a technical report based off our results and check that our clients were within their emissions rates, depending on the licenses they have. And whatever the results were, I'd liaise with people like the Environmental Protection Agency and local county councils. So that was my cooperative placement and it gave me a great experience into what I could potentially be going into after my college experience. So for my final year project, my title was using QGIS software, which is basically a map making software to assess site suitability for the construction of solar farms. So how I approached it was I picked five topics and that would be considered when you're building a solar farm. So your solar exposure, the soil type you're building on, the current land use, 
the slope of the land and what way that's directed and the ability to connect a given location to the electrical grid because if you can't get your energy to the grid it is basically useless so you need that as a very key part of your building so i created five different maps for each of the topics and within each topic i then graded them with the most and least desirable aspects so more solar exposure would get a higher grade than low solar exposure so that's how i managed it at the end of my research i had two documents one was a step-by-step -step guide as to how i created my maps so if someone wanted to come along and recreate my results that they could do so and the actual research project itself so I picked four sites all across Ireland and I assessed their site suitability if they were to potentially host a solar farm and how they'd be received. So, and that was what I presented for my final year project. After your graduation, where do you end up after you've studied for your four years? So I graduated in 2020, which unfortunately was the onset of a pandemic. So when I graduated, my co-op placement were willing to take me back on, but because of health restrictions, they were unfortunately unable to. So I did a small stint in retail somewhere else. And, but while I was working, I was interviewing for other places. So I was lucky enough to be taken on by a company called TLI Group. I worked with them initially as a junior fiber planner, but I've since been made permanent and I've been promoted to a fully fledged fiber planner. Um, what they do is they are a construction and consultancy telecoms company so we work on behalf of the national broadband installing fiber in rural ireland providing high-speed broadband and a secure network so obviously it's not exactly related to environmental science but while i was doing my interview i told them about my experience with the gis software which is the software they use on a daily basis which does take a bit of training to get you introduced to on my cooperative placement, I worked with crews on site, which is something we do on a daily basis. And my general environmental knowledge was what led them to think that I would be a good fit for the company. And I'm working with them to this day, so they weren't too far off. But it's not the only option that you have out of environmental science, obviously. A lot of my classmates are scattered throughout Ireland. You have some people that are working in wind farm construction. We have a few environmental health and safety officers working in multinational companies and a few of our graduates went on to do further education in masters and I think someone else is interested in doing a doctorate at some stage. So that is me. Hopefully I've given you a bit of an insight as to what my experience was like here in UL and maybe inspired you to consider environmental science as a potential option for yourselves as students. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, so my name is Aidan and I graduated in 2017 with a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Um, so it's just a nice picture of our graduation class. You can see we're kind of outnumbered a little bit with the women, but um, it was a nice bunch of people. So I, uh, it's nice to look back and see everyone. Um, so why did I choose UL and more importantly, why did I choose Equine Science? So I'm a Limerick native, so it's kind of it was an easy choice for me to choose UL, but equine science is something I've been passionate about. Um, I grew up with horses and kind of liked science as well. So I thought, why not? I'll choose equine science. Um, seems like the right fit for me. Um, the course itself is really varied, covers a lot of different topics and subjects. Um, whether you're interested in science or business um, and equitation, it covers a wide variety of different um, subject matter. Um, Graduates from the course go on to do a lot of different um, things, different careers, um, from race course management to stud farm management, veterinary, pharmaceutical industry. Um, a lot of people go on to do further education, whether it's masters or even PhDs. Um, the course in year two, you can choose between an equitation or a business speciality. So I actually chose equitation. Um, I have an interest with working hands-on with horses, so it was easy for me to choose 
equitation. Um, having said that, in my class, it was kind of a 50-50 split between business and equitation, so I suppose it's just personal preference. Um, the core of the the um, the core of the degree is science and there's science subjects in every single year and um, so it is quite science based there's chemistry biology um, microbiology um, anatomy physiology uh, there's there's quite a lot of science subjects within the the course itself as well as your business modules and your hands-on equitation modules also um, the lectures themselves, they're great. Class size is small, which is nice because you get to know your lectures really well and it's quite helpful because if you're ever stuck with something, they're only ever an email or a phone call or they're they're quite easily contactable. Um, the laboratories, really good spec um, for for when you're based in the lab. And then UL itself, the there has a lot to offer. The campus is amazing. I live quite local, so I'll come here for walks, but it's getting bigger and bigger every year. Clubs and societies, I definitely recommend new students to sign up to. I did when I first started. And Limerick itself, the nightlife is um, is quite good for, for obvious reasons. As a student, you'll obviously uh, be looking into the nightlife. And um, so the, the course structure. So I actually had an interesting route. I didn't start off in equine science. I started off in industrial biochemistry. Um, I did two years of that and decided it wasn't for me. Um, I did... Uh, kind of, I changed over then from industrial biochemistry to equine science, but I started off in um, the certificate in equine science. So there's there's two routes you can take. You can go the certificate diploma degree, or you can do the four year degree. Um, so I did the certificate diploma degree, which is still four years, um, but it's just a different route of getting your bachelor of science. Um, in year one in the degree program, so you have your foundation in science, um, equitation, which is your hands-on experience with your horses, and then um, there's also business modules in that as well. Year two, um, it's more specialised, so um, your modules are more specific, not so much general, but more specific to the course that you're studying. Um, and then in year two, you decide for um, in year two, you decide what you're going to do in year three, whether it's business or equitation. So you need to make that decision. Um, and then the second half of year three, you're on your cooperative. Um, work placement. Um, the work placement is eight months long. Um, and then in the final year, you have your thesis, which is your project that you're going to write up um, based on um, whatever chosen, uh, whatever piece of study that you are going to specify in. So um, an interesting one, I just as well, if you're ever wondering about the modules, it's quite good to go on the website, look at the course, go into the syllabus and look at the different modules, click on them and read the description. It'll really give you a good outline as to what's involved in each subject um, on the course. So the cooperative um, work placement is in year three, the second half of year three. I had an interesting um, work placement. I actually did it in two places. So for the first two months, I went to Germany and I worked hands-on with horses um, in a place called Paul Schockemolas. And um, so I was working with uh, show jumping horses um, for, for the first two months of my work placement. And the second half, I actually worked in the Irish Equine Centre. So you'll see the pictures of, um, these are some of your lectures that you'll have within the course. And um, it's really nice. So your lectures will actually, so my lectures then turned into my employers. So. Uh, Tom Buckley would be the microbiology, and Nan is virology, um, Alan is in environmental nutrition, and Ursula is pathology. So they're all based in the Irish Equine Centre, um, but you get to know them throughout the course because they're actually your lecturers, which is really nice. So for my work placement, Tom just rang me up and said, Aidan, would you be wanting to come up and do work placement? And I jumped at the opportunity and went up to Nace in Kildare. Um, the company itself is a really nice um, place to work. There's a lot of past graduates working there. Um, it's quite a big company. There's about um, 70 employees um, and it's really varied. So you have your microbiology, you have your virology, you have forensics, environmental nutrition. There's loads of different departments within the, the equine center itself. So I did my last six months there. Um, and while I was on there, I was lucky. I actually did my um, research for my thesis in my fourth year. Um, so I got the opportunity to do all that work whilst on my co-op placement. Um, a lot of people don't get to do that. Another thing to note as well is UL is one of the 
one of the universities that allow you to do work placement. Some universities don't actually give you that opportunity. So you can finish your four year, four year degree and you might not have any work placement, which isn't ideal when you're finishing up trying to get a job if you don't have work experience. It's hard to get a job if you don't have work experience. So I would say it's definitely an advantage there. Um, so when I was on my work placement, as I said, I was doing my fourth year project as a part of it. Um, my project was uh, PCR, so it's that's the title. So it's loop, medi loop mediated isothermal amplification, a novel technique for the detection of horse meat. So it's a type of PCR, the same as COVID testing. It's a type of PCR, but it was to look at um, finding horse meat in food products, basically, is what it was for. Um, it's really interesting. It was very topical to my course, um, and it was really nice to be able to do that whilst on my, my work placement. Um, I learned a lot. The techniques I had are very applicable. Once I finished the course, I was, I was um, confident that I should be able to get a job having had that experience. Um, so this is just a little career timeline. So as I said, I actually started in industrial biochemistry. So I started in 2010 in, in UL, but I started in the equine science program in 2013. Um, in the summer of 2013, I actually got a summer bursary here on campus and um, it was in, based in the laboratories over in the Schrodinger building. And I was looking into copper levels in uh, perennial ryegrass. So that kind of gave me an understanding of laboratory work and working in the lab and getting a feel for the science side of things. And um, so then uh, my work placement is in the middle of 2016. And then I finished up my degree in 2017. And in the summer of 2017, I actually got to work with a master's student at the time. She was um, doing her master's and I got to work with her. It was really nice. I wasn't really sure whether or not I wanted to go on to do a master's. So working with her kind of settled in my head that I wasn't quite ready for the master's yet. So I post, I kind of pushed that to the side. But um, before I actually, when I finished up with that, I actually got a stopover of a job and I worked with the Limerick Hunt. So I was working hands on with horses. So I was managing the yard there. There was 10 horses and I was I did that for nearly three months. And that was nice. It was having sole charge of a, a yard and facilities with horses. It was it was a bit of a stopover. But after that, then I actually got a phone call from the Irish Equine Centre. A job came available. So I jumped at that opportunity and went back up and I uh, started working in the microbiology department. And that went on for two years. And then a job came up in Feathered Equine Hospital, which is another hospital, um, an equine based hospital. And that's where I'm currently working at the moment. Um, 2020, I did a springboard uh, course, which is another little add on course you can do while you're in full time employment. Um, and then in 2021, our laboratory, our team actually applied for the Irish Laboratory Awards and we were runner up. Um, we unfortunately didn't win, but we were runner up. Um, to um, Bristol Myers Squibb, which is a really big company for a laboratory team of the year. So it was a really big achievement for us and we were really proud. So, um, and then 2022, I was promoted. So I was made senior laboratory analyst and I'm still there today, which, um, so just to talk a little bit about, so um, the Irish Equine Centre where I did my work placement, but also I was employed there. It's um, an ISO accredited laboratory, which is a standard, a quality standard that um, some laboratories have. Um, they do a lot of testing of different types of samples. It's not just horse samples, it's environmental samples. It's water testing, it's food testing. They do salmonella testing. It's very uh, varied. Um, it's a very, very company. Irish Equine Centre doesn't really paint the picture of what type of a laboratory it is. It does a lot of different testing, not just for the equine population. Um, so, yeah, they do. Um, I was, as, as I said, I was based in the micro department, so I was doing a lot of salmonella testing, listeria, clostridia, loads of different types of micro side of um, work. Um, and I got to experience a lot of different departments. So not just the micro, I got to go into forensics. I was in PCR for a while. Um, I got to help out in media prep, so even making the agar. So I got a lot of experience whilst based in the Irish Equine Centre. And Feather Equine Hospital, that's my current employer, and it's based in Tipperary. It's a, it's a hospital, it's purpose built for, um, for horses, and there's over 80 employees, 25 of which are vets, five are surgeons, and there's one specific um, medicine vet. We have a dedicated laboratory on site, and there's a team of just seven of us in the lab. Um, but within the lab, we actually do quite a lot. So we do hematology, biochemistry, microbiology, PCR, my, microscopy and serology. So we do kind of everything. It's a one stop 
shop for the vets and the surgeons. They drop in samples throughout the day and we're, we're very busy. So um, uh, just so you know, some of the career paths, it's really varied. Uh, people that do equine science go on to do in numerous different, um, different careers. Um, that's just a list of some of them. So like um, within my class, a lot of people went on to do further study. One of my classmates is a lecturer now. Um, some people are working in pharmacies. So there's people working for the likes of Pfizer, um, stud nominations, tourism, still working hands-on with horses, product development. You know, there's, it, there's a really a wide variety, but <laughs> that goes down to the course itself and the modules that's offered. So it's not just um, science, it's not just business. There's even an option of a language within the course. Um, it's really varied and it applies, it, it, it caters to a lot of different types of people in a lot of different, um, in a lot of different ways. So, so yeah, that's um, everything. So if you have any questions, please do ask us. I'd love to be um, able to help anyone if they're worried about their decisions. Absolutely. was approved by Mitchell Macron. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so sorry. So that's kind of our regulatory body of healthcare professionals in Ireland. So you, once you have finished the degree, you apply for crew registration. And because it's a crew approved course, it takes no like it'll take like two months. Otherwise you can't practice um, as a registered dietitian in Ireland without being crew approved. Perfect. Okay. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Great. It's the professional body for all sorts of things like physios and all. Yeah. They all have to have yeah. approval and our course has so. Great, thank you. Uh, are there many dietitians working in UHL? And at the moment, there's about 20 of us, but we're short staffed. So we're always like, well, then there's so many job opportunities at the moment. It's definitely expanded. Like, people are grateful anytime to know. So there's not a lot of people, graduates from dietetics in Ireland. It's growing at the moment, like there's yes. masters in Cork as well and Dublin, but definitely the demand is there for dietitians at the moment, yeah. Thank you. Every year we have a few people in the course, from the food science course going to, our, yeah. to UL and uh, also abroad in the UK. Um, but they used to go to the UK mostly, but now we have UL has a course, Cork has a course, Dublin. There's also one called Rain around the Yeah. So every everyone that did our course did the job right now. Like right. everyone was sort of then I'd say three months, two, three months. Like mm -hmm. it was very yeah. Yeah, immediate. So they're getting snapped up. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. And, uh, long way to ask. I think you require the uh, places they live at it, you know, the 15th and yeah. Is there such demand why it is I suppose it's trying to organise the placements. Um, it's very hard to, I suppose, put additional work on the dietitians that are already working in the hospitals and taking on students that takes a lot of time and training them up. So it's hard, I suppose, for our placement coordinator to get opportunities and you know locations to agree and take on students. Okay, right. So what it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's Environmental science, equine science, and you know, guys interested in that? <laughs> what, what are you interested in science? Yeah. yeah. What is like biology, physics, chemistry? Yeah. Well, all of those courses have a ton of biology and applied biology. It's towards an end, as I say. So, do some of the modules overlap? Uh, not that much, I suppose. They're not meant to. They're meant to kind of complement each other. So if you understand something in one, you come onto the concept for something in another, they don't have a bit of the materials and crop, you know, just overlap each other. You try not to like to do that. You try to build step by step. 
So that once you get one module from your belt, you'll understand enough to want the next one, that sort of thing. So yeah. And then if the environmental, then what's the difference between doing um, like environmental to biochemistry? Um, oh, was it the direct entry and the common entry? Yeah. yeah. Well, the direct entry is what I did. So you go directly into environmental science and we get a module environmentally based to ourselves in the first year, whereas the common entry, you kind of do a general science year. Now, I would have been doing modules and lectures with those people as well. So you're doing a lot of the same things, but we're more specified where they're broader science. So once you do your first year and you decide you want to do environmental science, we get all into the same group, so you'd be covering everything from second year to fourth year exactly the same. Okay, all right, okay, thank you. But would there be a limited number of people that would actually be allowed in? Yes, I, I don't know how it works now for the yeah. common entry, but there are like quotas that they have to fill, so there are certain courses that are larger who can take more people. But in my course, when we started, we had about 23 people, and then that jumped to like 28, 29 people. With the entry, so it all depends on the requirements and what people want to yeah. be in. But I think there is some statistics that they're saying that most people either get their first or second choice, so it's like you're never really left out or at a loss for what you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> I wish I was starting all over again. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think I'd do all three if I could. <laughs> They're all really interesting. Yeah. Doing the leading service here. Have you made your choices? CAO? So, like, science is, is in general is doing really well in Northern Ireland. It's, and they work. There's a lot of life sciences stuff going on, like the general, loads of other Edwards, zero set, all sorts of people are taking on graduates from science, food, equine, and uh, environmentalism. There's you know, great opportunities out there. Um, so consider science, it's, it's plenty. Ireland is doing well. Yeah. So, anything else, I'm the course director. Uh, I'm on the website. All the courses have their course directors with their emails. So if you need anything, I think I can in the future. Just email us with that. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.